Hey, good morning everyone. Good Sunday everyone. Uh, today I thought I thought uh, why not doing an ancient Egyptian video because it's been a long time. I haven't done uh, a video on ancient Egypt. So so I thought uh, why not asking ChatGPT uh, how the Great Pyramid of Giza was built, right? And see what, what ChatGPT says live and comment with you, right? So yeah, I mean, would you would you not be curious to see AI what AI thinks the, the how the Egyptian built it? Like I think it's worth it at least to to explore this possibility. So uh, so yeah, so so yeah. Before just before we we go on, like if you if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please go ahead. We're gonna do more videos on ancient Egypt very soon. Uh, one of which will be my my own take on the Great Pyramid, so I'm preparing that. It's a very long topic. Uh, yeah, I'm, we're gonna we also I'm also gonna do more videos on architecture in general. So yeah, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video uh, if you haven't. So um, yeah, let's ask ChatGPT now. So um, hey, ChatGPT, uh, how was the Great Great Pyramid of Giza built. Let's see what this says. Hello, the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza is fascinating feat of ancient engineering. Oh, yes. So, it is believed to have been built during the fourth dynasty, correct, of the old kingdom of ancient Egypt. Around, yeah, it's correct. For Kafa, for Farouk, correct. <laughs> Uh, well, it is believed by whom, <laughs> you know, by the by, well, by 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 the majority of people, right? The exact methods used in its construction are not entirely known. Well, that's true, but several theories have been proposed. Gener the generally accepted theory is that Egyptians used a combination of skilled labor, that's true, simple tools, that's true, and ingenuity, that's true, <laughs> to build the pyramid. The basic steps involved in the construction are the follow that are thought to include quarrying. So quarrying massive limestone and granite blocks were quarried nearby. Well, that's not true. The granite blocks were not quarried nearby, but were quarrying a swan. So, uh, but the limestone ones, yes, nearby and transported to the construction site. Well, how? Like how? It doesn't say much, right? We're going to ask uh, later. The limestone blocks were used for the bulk of the, for the bulk of the pyramid. While granite was used for interior chamber and casing, not really. So casing stones were not in granite, and uh, the uh, granite was used just on one chamber. Uh, not, not. There are two more chambers in the Great Pyramid, at least. So no. Uh, there are different theories about how the stones were transported, but the prevailing idea is that the sledges were used to drag the stones over wet or sandy terrain. That's true. But it doesn't say uh, how about the granite coming from Aswan? Like how was that coming to Giza? Like by ships, right? So that does ChatGPT doesn't doesn't specify this. So recent experiments have demonstrated that wetting the sand in front of the sledge reduced friction. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, well, we know that, but yeah, that doesn't that doesn't you know doesn't answer our question. Like how can you just you know move? so much quantities of stone in such a short amount of time, like 30 years, right? Or 24. Uh, shaping and lifting, yes. Now, let's see what she says. So once the constructions, once at the construction site, the stones were shaped using copper tools. Yeah, that's what we know. Uh, the exact method of lifting the stones to the higher levels of the pyramid is still a matter of debate, yeah, exactly. Some theories propose the use of straight or zigzagging ramps. Well, that's not the case. Uh, we know that that's not possible. While others suggest uh, the construction of a spiral ramp around the that also is not possible. So yeah, it doesn't mention the interior ramp theory here. So that's curious because the, that's the latest, uh, most credible latest theory. Uh, although I don't believe in that. So. Um, Placement. The stones were carefully placed in layers. Well, yes, horizontal layers. We, we needs to be specified, with each layer slightly smaller than the one below. Yeah, kinda. Uh, although you have not. It's yeah. Okay. So it's, it's bigger at the base and smaller at the top. But in between the base and the top, uh, there are like 
he doesn't just go uh, uh, it doesn't just go that it doesn't just reduce the thickness of the stones it's also uh, at some point they go bigger again and then smaller again and then go bigger again and smaller again so it's not like a constant uh, degree you know the uh, crease decrease of, of of dimension the precision of the construction is remarkable that's for sure but what do you mean by precision you mean like um, what do you mean like precision because it's precisely oriented north that's for sure but the precision of of the construction inside of the pyramid is not really like uh, super you know because even the Khufu chamber itself is not really super accurate uh, so you mean the, the accuracy of the construction is remarkable uh, yeah but the precision no like it's not because you don't have like blocks that are always the same yeah every blocks are different all the blocks are different one to each other so with the sides of the pyramid aligned to the cardinal points of, well one side at least the east side is super super precise to north and uh, that's so famous 360 of a single degree but the other sides are really not as accurate as the east side so the construction of the great pyramid is a testament to the organization for sure engineering skill for sure and manpower for sure of ancient egyptian society while the exact details of some aspects of the construction remain uncertain well for sure they remain uncertain but these are not details <laughs> these are major major things we need to know uh, ongoing research and archaeological discoveries continue to shed light on the methods used by the ancient Egyptians. no they don't shed light they don't unfortunately they don't we still this is still a big mystery so so let's ask more stuff maybe shall we like uh, how how were the granite blocks from us one as one uh, brought to Giza the transportation of granite blocks from us one is one of the intriguing aspects of the construction 800 kilometers south of Giza was the source of granite used in the inner chambers of the casing stones. No, no, no. It was not used as casing stones. Maybe it was used on the first three layers of Catherine. But, and, and, and obviously the whole uh, Menkaure pyramid, but not the Great Pyramid. Several theories have proposed to explain how the Egyptians transported these massive blocks. One, blah, 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 using boats. Uh, system of canals connected to an area yeah okay fine here is a general outline of the boat based transport oh yeah are you ready quarrying the granite blocks were quarried in a swan thank you the blocks were transported down the Nile River on large wooden boats yeah the Nile was a vital transportation route we know that yes it is believed that a system of canals possibly supplemented by artificial channels and basins was constructed to facilitate the movement thank you these canals will have allowed the boats to bypass natural obstacles and navigate closer, yes. Once the granite blocks reached a point closer to Giza, they were unloaded from the boats and transported overland to the construction site using sledges. Okay, the sledges were likely dragged. Okay, uh, the exact details of the transportations are still, you know, subject to debate. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 nevertheless, heavy materials, common practice, okay, well, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, that's, we know, transportation, okay, then shipping and lifting. How were, on earth, how were uh, the 70 tons blocks lifted to, uh, you know, how were the 70 ton blocks lifted? Uh, yeah, let's just ask this. Lifting the massive stones, some weighing up to 70 tons, to the higher levels of the Great Pyramid of Giza is such subject of much speculation. So, first, straight ramps. One theory suggests the straight ramps, uh, allowing the stone is, uh, to be dragged and rolled up to the higher levels. As each layer of the pyramid was completed, the ramp would be extended. Well, that's not the case because we know that the ramp. It, it was impossible like the ramp will take as much material as the pyramid or more than the pyramid itself okay to have like a 10 degrees um, you know a 10 degrees ramp so that's straight ramp theory is gone you, we, we know that's not the case 
zigzagging. Uh, well, another theory proposes the construction of zigzagging ramps that gradually ascends the sides of the pyramid. This design would reduce the length and steepness of each ramp side. That's true, making it more feasible. Yes, the ramp could have been constructed from mud brick, limestone, chips, and rubber. Okay, the zigzagging also has been debunked uh, because of the angles that while they were building the pyramid, they had to check the angles of the pyramid. So also, this is the same objection that it's being made to the spiral ramp theory. Uh, so you, because you can't check the angles. Uh, so yeah, so they couldn't do the, any like zigzagging and spiral, uh, spiral, spiral pyra ramps. Uh, internal ramps. An alternative theory proposes the use of internal ramp. This is Jean Paul. Got Jean Paul. Wow, I forgot the name. Jean Paul, the, the French architect. Um, the use of internal ramps or corridors within the pyramid itself. Well, the problem with that is that with the scam with the scam pyramid projects, we would be able, I think, to find at least the spiral, the internal spiral, right? Even if it's filled with uh, like blocks. And also, uh, I find as an architect, I find that to be too complicated um, for for just overcomplicate the design. Uh, so stones will be uh, okay. An alternative proposed the use of internal ramps of corridors within the pyramid itself. Stones will be hauled up these ramps as construction progress, and then the ramps will be sealed with a completed structure. However, finding evidence for such internal structure is challenging due to the dense construction and lack of direct access. Well, yeah, it's true, but yeah, you can't really, like, I, I don't believe in this theory. Um, we would have found some evidence by now, uh, especially in the corners. We know that in the corners, you know, we have like a cave on the east north side. And in that side, like that, it hasn't really been explored that much, but if it was an internal wrap, we would have known, and not, not, not just in this pyramid, in any other pyramid, right? So, no. The exact details of how the heavy block were lifting remain uncertain, as there is no direct archaeological evidence for ramps. Well, that's not true. We know that they use ramps. Uh, there is a remain of the ramp in the pyramid of second cat. Was it second cat? And then other pyramids, uh, the pyramid of uh, Sela, right? It's very small, but it has like some little ramps. So we know they use ramps, but yeah, we just don't know how you can use ramp to build the Great Pyramid of Giza. Additionally, the construction process is likely involved a combination of methods, for sure, and different parts of the pyramid they have built using different techniques, for sure. Ongoing research where? <laughs> Ongoing research who? A new discoveries may provide more insights into this. But who is researching this? Like, who is really like? Nobody is really researching how the. I mean, yeah. Apart from the independent like researchers and passionate. Uh, okay, so I mean, yeah. How many questions should we ask him? Like, there are so many questions I would like to ask to ChatGPT. So, um, um, what should we ask more? Um, how would you build the Great Pyramid of Giza if you were living in the third millennium BC? Haha, <laughs> let's see. Uh, site selection. Choose an appropriate site for the pyramid. Yes. Close to the Rhine River. Yes. For transportation of material. And with a solid foundation. Yes. Okay. That's the case of Giza. The alignment of the sides with the cardinal points will be crucial for religion and symbolic reasons. Yes, for sure. Quarrying. Identify suitable quarries for limestone. Okay. Quarrying the stone using copper tools, which were commonly used in ancient Egypt. Limestone will be used. For the majority of the pyramid, while granite will, reserve, granite will be reserved for the inner chambers and casing stones. Again, casing stones. Transportation. Develop a transportation system to move the massing, massive stones from the quarry. Okay. Use sledges. Okay. To transport the stones. Experiment with wetting the sand. Okay. To reduce friction. Fine. Construction planning. Develop a detailed construction plan. Well, 
and we don't know if they uh, used a detailed construction plan. I think they were really like they knew. I don't know. Like they probably just really build it like on the go. I think like I don't know. Yeah, taking into account the gradual reduction in the size of the stones for each layer of the pyramid, ensure precise measurements and alignment to achieve the desired shape. Well, yeah, ramp construction, experiment with different types of ramp. Well, you could do, how can you experiment? You don't have the time. You have 24 years to build the, the biggest one of them. <laughs> no, I have much experiment. Such as straight ramps, zigzagging ramps, or spiral ramps for listing stones to higher levels. Use locally available materials such as mud brick and limestone chippings for construction. Yeah, yeah. Organization and labor. Organize a large and skilled workforce, possibly consisting of both skilled craftsmen and a significant labor force. Yes, yes, yes. Implement a system of labor protection to manage the physical demands of the construction work. Okay. Ah, uh, ceremonial and religious significance. Incorporate the construction process into the religion and ceremonial beliefs of the time. The construction reveal was likely a highly symbolic and religious endeavor, reflecting the pharaoh's divine. Okay, that doesn't inform me much. Time and resource management. Okay, efficiently manage time and resource. Okay, the construction will span several decades, and careful planning and resource allocation will be necessary. How was the funeral funeral ceremony taking place in the pyramid? Because you know, guys, the tunnels of, of the Great Pyramid are very small, so you can't do any ceremony in like you can't, you really can't do any ceremony like ritual. Like you can do once you are in the Khufu, like once you are in the king's chamber, but. You can't really bring like stuff inside, especially when when, <laughs> when the, I mean, if you if you've been to the Great Pyramid inside, you know that it was really unlikely that they did any like ritual, um, unless they did it, unless they did the ritual while while they were building the pyramid and then they finished the pyramid after the pharaoh died. But that I don't think that's also the case. So how was the funeral ceremony taking place in the pyramid? The funeral, the funeral ceremony associated with the Great Pyramid of Giza was a complex and ritualistic process that reflected the religious beliefs. Blah, blah, blah. The pyramid served as a monumental tomb, blah, 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 and the funeral ceremony was a cross. Okay. Here is a general overview. Preparation of the pharaoh's body. After the pharaoh's death, the body was carefully prepared for burial through a process known as mummification. Great. Although we don't have like much proof of the old king. No, no, we do, we do, we do. We know that mummy fight even in the old king. So that's, that's true. This involved removing internal organs, treating the body with preservatives and wrapping it in line and bandages. Okay. The mummified body along with the funerary equipment and personal belongings was then placed in a series of coffins of, or sarcophagi, sarcophagi, often nested within one another. Okay. Transportation to the pyramid. The procession of the deceased pharaoh, accompanied by, by priests, officials, and mourners, will move from the mortuary temple to the pyramid. The mortuary temple, you know, the, the temple that is at the base of the pyramid, was a structure located adjacent to the pyramid and served as a place for rituals and offerings. Okay, they were doing the rituals and offerings there. Burial in the pyramid. The burial chamber within the pyramid was the final resting place of the pharaoh. The chamber was usually located deep within the pyramid and accessed through a series of corridors and passages. The first body, along with the burial goods and items, believed to be necessary for the afterlife, was placed inside the burial chamber. Okay, my question is like, when was placed in the burial chamber? The burial chamber often contained a large sarcophagus to house the... You see, it doesn't... Okay, let's go on. After the burial, the entrances... So so here so he says like okay is the pharaoh died let's go up let's bring the pharaoh down the descending corridor and then what then what how do you how do you bring it up to the ascending corridor there were the granite plugs right well let's suppose that the granite plugs were back and they were not closing the space still how would you put how would you like you know put it like bring the you know the wooden coffin up there 
uh, given that it's one by one, it's one meter by one meter. So, well, you can do that. Yes, you can. So let's go. You, you put it up there and then, and then, okay, you, you put it down, up there and then somebody has to be there. Like You can figure that out. You can figure it out, but definitely you're not going to make any procession or ritual there. Okay. Offerings and rituals that were done in the mortuary temple. So fine. And then they bring the coffin up there and then they go back and they close the pyramid forever with the granite plugs. Uh, that's okay. I can, I mean, still, still difficult to navigate through the internal chambers, uh, with through the internal tunnels with the, with the coffin, but I, 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 I believe it's, it's, it's doable. Oh, it's doable. The mortuary temple served as a place of, for ongoing rituals and offerings dedicated to the deceased pharaoh. Priests and attendants will conduct ceremonies to ensure the pharaoh's well-being in the afterlife. Offerings for food, drink, and symbolic items were made to sustain the pharaoh's ka. Inscription on the temple was provided guidance and prayers to the pharaoh's journey. Okay, funerary cult. A funerary cult dedicated to the deceased pharaoh would often be established. Priests and officials will continue to perform rituals and ceremonies at the mortuary temple to honor and sustain the pharaoh's spirits. Yeah, okay. Uh, last question. How would you um, bring the coffin up in the king chamber given its uh, short, like, given its dimensions? The king's chamber of the Great Pyramid is located deep. Okay, well, we know. And bringing large uh, would have been a challenging task. Okay, the dimensions of the Great of the Granite Sarcophagus are approximately 2.3 by 1 meter. Well, we know the sarcophagus was placed wh while the pyramid was being built. Uh, okay, internal ramps, corbelling. I oh, know he didn't really understand the the, the, the question. Vertical shafts. It will be used to leave the manufacturing sarcophagus to its final position. No, <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, it's still a mystery. Well, thank you, ChatGPT, uh, for clarifying. So, so let's see. Look, what did we learn actually? So, w well, I learned that uh, the rituals could actually be on the mortuary temple on the mortuary temple and that's it so they the ceremony will finish there and then they will just put the body uh just bring the body up uh in the in the king's chamber uh fine fine that uh that's fine uh well about the construction no news really no news so yeah you don't have any clue eh, ai <laughs> because we don't have any clue you also don't have any clue Okay, I thought this was an interesting episode and uh, I hope you guys are cool. Uh, yeah, let's see next video. Let's see what we do. Okay, bye bye.